Hi, this is MXUX. I'm doing this video on the uh, Foxconn deal with uh, Lordstown Motors. And I wanted to go over first in this first section about Foxconn and what they're trying to do. Foxconn is known for the iPhone building and all that business in the giant factory uh, where people jump off the roof. Hopefully that's not going to happen at Lordstown. Anyway, what they are doing is they are Develop. They want to get into, and here's their logo, Foxconn. With the, uh, with the, they're they're from Taiwan. They're a Taiwanese company, or Chinese, if you want to put it that way. Uh, they're developing what they call an EV kit concept, and uh, just like you develop apps for an iPhone, they're going to do the same thing. Their concept is to do the same thing with electric vehicles. And they're developing a skateboard and um, and the whole infrastructure uh, to build a car. And then uh, the, the API or the app is going to be uh, what you design, uh, the body panel, so on and so forth. So the, all the mechanicals are going to be in a skateboard. Uh, so we got here, there's going to be drive-by-wire installed for self-driving, a rolling chassis, and they're going to have an auto design app, actually an app, which customers can use to design what they want to build. Okay? This is not a lie. So, I have here an API-like kit to develop uh, EV-like. Uh, it, 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 it's like developing an app for an iPhone. So, you go in, uh, you go into the app, you design the car you want. Uh, boom, and you contract uh, Foxconn to build it. So contract manufacturing, the EV kit concept. That's what they're looking to do. So they've got a couple. Uh, let me go over this and see if I can explain it. It's a new concept. They have an open ecosystem for EV development. They have uh, AutoWare, uh, which is an open source software. This is from uh, uh, AutoWare, which is another, another entity operating in this conglomerate or group of companies. Uh, they're developing uh, open source uh, level four self-driving, which is what Tesla has right now. And um, level five is no human contact. So uh, they're doing that for an open source and they're gonna offer that to their clients and they're gonna put in drive-by-wire in the cars they build to enable this uh, open source uh, automatic driving uh, program and they have a, a community of developers and hardware and software this is set up as a nonprofit organization you know George Hotz like um, comma AI same kind of thing uh, but this is part of what they're offering in their EV kit concept so the software and the hardware to run it uh, plus the rolling chassis, which is battery motors, so on and so forth, and then the uh, auto design app to design the body and the interior. So uh, they're working with AutoWare on this, and um, this is making the future EV. Here's the deal. They're offering software choices for go-to-market design plus manufacturing. So, in other words, you design it, we build it. Use the app, we'll get you ready to go to market. So not only do they have uh, the manufacturing, the rolling chassis, the whole deal, they have the software, they integrate everything. This allows you to go to market uh, with your product. Now, now Fisker is, is a client now of Magna, but is going to be a client of Foxconn. So Fisker does the design and branding, and MIH, which is a control software conglomerate battery sort of thing, AutoWare, the self-driving, and Foxconn, the builders, uh, do the rest. Uh, Fisker picks and chooses the options, and these guys get together, and let's just call them Foxconn from now on. You can investigate this yourself. It's a rather complicated web of different entities that are working together. I have a short video on it later. So they offer a full stack software for the future uh, EV, autonomous driving OEM product. So what they're offering is, you want to build a self-driving EV? 
design it on this app to drop do these drop down menus tell me what tell us what you want to do battery motors blah 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 and you can build it so they're calling it uh, EV kit it's a collection of services and components and software and this could be for new cars or an existing EV car so people that are doing original uh, manufacturing uh, OEM like Ford or whatever they could buy this software as well um, and they could also contract uh, uh, Foxconn to build it for them. so what the deal is Fisker is the client Fisker does the branding the design the marketing and the business model which in their case is affordable uh, SUV direct uh, direct to consumer uh, by Fisker and uh, Foxconn is going to do all the building Fisker will own the dies okay so the the dies will be proprietary the stamping dies we've gone over this at Lordstown uh, but everything else is going to be with Foxconn and the EV kit will do the rest and uh, you just you just choose some options so this is the idea with with Foxconn this is what they want to present to the world really and Magna does something similar to this but I don't think Magna is in this deep Magna builds ice cars in China and Magna is building Fisker's current SUV offering so Existing automakers can just choose certain components. Uh, Japan and Taiwan are doing this approach. So here's here's what they say. They're going with the team approach. The Asian approach is the team approach versus the USA self-sufficient approach, which would be the Tesla model. Okay, and this model has worked in Japan. Uh, Magna, for example, builds Mercedes there, and so forth. That's one of the brands they build. Uh, in the USA it's Tesla and I think one of the reasons that Tesla went totally self-sufficient which Lordstown Motors found out was they will try to stymie you any way they can that's why Lordstown Motors had to put that frame shop in because they were frozen out of the frame market by the OEM manufacturers that are in existence now this is why Tesla went all in now when you got these 10 or 15 companies all working together it presents a moat the uh, OEMs, the original OEMs, the ICE manufacturers can't cross. So anyway, and they're talking about the craftsmanship, timing, or paramount with the EV kit concept, okay, as well as open source software for the self-driving. So they're talking about high quality manufacturing, uh, just in time manufacturing uh, of inventory to sell directly to customers and open source software for self-driving which Tesla probably should be worried about uh, this could knock the blocks right out from under Tesla uh, is Foxconn making Apple Apple cars we don't know the MIH platform can be used by any company globally that wants to make EVs and that's a key concept so MIH is another organization that's involved in the battery motor stuff uh, control systems um, as well as the entertainment system I would imagine so could Foxconn make the Apple car yes Foxconn can under this plan which they are executing could make anybody's car for anywhere in the world and uh, it looks like Tesla is a self-driving key target for this open source uh, it's a stack they call it a stack and I have level level four which is the highest you can go without being legally allowed to call it self-driving and comma AI via George Hotz I've, I've done it mentioned him in my videos in the past very interesting guy very interesting system same type of concept only these guys have he's a independent and they have incorporated it into a corporate uh, framework uh, and again, MIH, this is the, the other entity that's involved. We've got uh, Fisker, and we've got, um, uh, well, Fisker, what was the other company? 
MIH, AutoWare, and Fisk and uh, and Foxconn are involved. So you've got uh, MIH, which is an ex Apple guy, uh, next computer guy. Uh, they're going to do uh, they're going to do the level four self driving integration, but we'll also add battery management software and other software, the software ecosystem for the car. So you got one entity doing open source self driving. You got the other one doing the operating system for the car, including battery management, and then you got uh, Foxconn doing the physical building. All of this is in the works to speak. Uh, all part of Foxconn's plan for EVs. Uh, Fox, Foxconn wants to diversify. This is key here. They want to diversify them to EVs. And here it is. Use an app to design a vehicle, and Foxconn will build it like an iPhone. So that's the concept. That's why they bought the plant in Lordstown. And um, they were supposed to build a plant in Minnesota. Uh, there was, they had initially did it to build uh, flat panel displays, and then they were going to put an EV car uh, thing in, and then this came up. Uh, Lordstown came up, and they saw the chance to take it. And I'm just going to take a second here to say a couple things. This is like, I forget what the replacement value on this factory is, like $3 trillion. There's a couple thousand robots in there, paint shop. This is, this is such a deal. Foxconn are no idiots, okay? And um, as I initially thought, and I just wanted to make this point, as I initially thought, um, you know, did Lordstown get taken? And the new CEO is a New York finance guy. And during the, I'll just tell you a quick story. During the uh, financial crisis in 08, I was in a bar, and there was a guy there, and he was celebrating the market crash. And I'll just tell you his first name is Greg. He actually owned a seat on the New York Stock Exchange. He said back when that meant something. But anyway, he had a private uh, hedge fund, let's say. And he had uh, eight or ten guys there working with him. And he had um, hedged the, uh, the collapse, and he made all kind of money short and everything. So anyway, I, I was talking to him, and I forget what the topic was. I think the Japanese were buying all the real estate in New York City at the time or something. And he said to me, he goes, there is no one is going to outdeal a New York finance guy. It is not going to happen. No one on the planet is going to do in a New York finance guy. They're apex predators. They know what they're doing. Uh, he said, I feel sorry for the Japanese. And he was right eventually about all of that. But the point is, uh, what I thought when I first heard this was, oh my God, they got, but you know what? You got to have confidence in the CEO because he's the right man to do this. And I think he knows what he's doing. Anyway, I'm going to uh, go into the next section here with these videos. I'm going to pause here for one minute. Okay, this is MXUX. This is a. Uh, I'm going to show a couple video clips here. This is the first one. This is uh, AutoWare, MIH, and Foxconn are all at this um, symposium, and they're talking about the new open source or the new uh, the new way to build uh, uh, EVs using the system I just talked about with AutoWare doing the, uh, the autonomous driving, MIH doing the operating system of the car, and Foxconn building the vehicle. So uh, this is uh, the guy who heads up the open source self-driving effort, and he's introducing the chairman of Foxconn, which I'm going to play just to give you guys an idea of what this guy, what he's about. Let's see if we can do this. Thank you for joining Tier 4 Summit 2021. I'm Shinpei, and I will be presenting as chairman of the Autoware Foundation, which is another role I have alongside Tier 4's founder and CTO. This is the last but the most exciting session. Here I'm joined by Foxconn chairman Yan Liu to help me kick off this session 
to discuss Foxconn's significant EV efforts based on recently launched Open Platform Alliance, MIH, and Otwell's involvement as well. Hello, Chairman Liu. Thank you for joining me today. Hey, thank you, Xinpei. I really appreciate the invitation. This is the chairman of Foxconn. First of all, I'd like to congratulate you on the success of Tier 4 Summit 2021. Tier 4 and the AutoWare Foundation have done a remarkable job developing truly open source-based autonomous driving technology. Look out, Tesla. As you may know, Foxconn recently initiated MIH and the EV uh, open platform to accelerate the innovation and the development of the EV industry. I believe both MIH and AutoWare share similar goals in terms of uh, autonomous driving. In that, we both are working towards making a positive change in the future automotive industry. Thank you. Well, we are privileged to have you with us today. I think. Just going to pause this for a second. MIH, uh, I don't know if I can find the clip with the guy talking who heads MIH. That's the ex Apple guy. They're doing the car operating system. So AutoWare is the self driving, MIH is the operating system and battery control. Okay. And then uh, Foxconn is uh, doing the assembly. I think people's interests and dedication to the EV industry is glowing. So can you tell us a little bit about MIH and what's actually going on with the open platform now before we dive deeper into the MIH alliance and so on? Sure, Xinpei. I'm very excited about MIH's future developments and more importantly, the collaboration between MIH and the AutoWare. But I'm not sure I'm the most appropriate person to talk to about MIH. Similar to AutoWare, MIH is now independently led by Jack and William. Foxconn launched the Open EV platform last October. Both Jack and William are currently looking at autonomous driving technology as well. Jack and William are much better suited to discuss this topic with you. I'm looking forward to the discussion among you, the open platforms are the future. Let's change the world together. Great. Well said, Chairman. So they're talking about the open platform. Uh, that's the platform that you build the body on. You use the app to build the body on. Everything else is all done. So uh, I'm going to see if I can't. Uh, this is, let's just get a real quick clip of this guy here. This is the guy from, this guy is ex-Next, ex-Apple, and he's doing the, uh, he's a MIH, and he's doing... ...of MIH. Uh, I do a little bit of introduction of myself. Uh, I'm a 40 years of a veteran in the automotive field. Uh, uh, it's a pleasure to meet everybody from here. Uh, I work on the NEO for the last five years uh, as a new startup, uh, as an EV company. Now, uh, coming into MIH is a pleasure. We are, I'm leading this charge of MIH as a new initiative to bring all the alliance into the MIH. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. William? Hi, everybody. Hi, Xinpei. Uh, my name is William Wei. I'm the MIH CTO. Uh, I also serve as a Foxconn Group CTO. And my, my background is, uh, I'm from uh, Apple background. Apple. Before that, I was Next. Next computer, computer I'm and a Apple. System builder, tool builder. And uh, very excited to uh, talk to uh, AWF uh, Foundation. So right. anyway, yeah. that, that'll give you an idea of who's on the other side of this deal. These are some heavyweights in China, uh, it's a big deal. These are some of the most powerful people in the in these different industries. I mean, Foxconn, uh, you can't get much bigger than that, and uh, these these other players as well. So, this is this is a heavyweight group of players that are coming in. They're going to launch this open platform. They're going to launch this uh, 
uh, manufacturing as a service in the United States at Lordstown uh, as long as the deal goes through, but I think it will go through. But anyway, I just wanted to give you guys an and idea. And this is a short video about the uh, Foxconn EV platform, uh, which may or may not be what we were just talking about. I haven't really found a lot of information on this platform. Uh, but uh, it is planned. This is February 21st, 21. Let's just play this short video here. Well, supplier Foxconn is planning to make a debut in the electric vehicles market this year. Experts say this could transform the iPhone assemblers into collaborators for the iCar, Apple's ambitious EV project. The Taiwanese electronic giant said two light vehicles using its own design platform will be unveiled in the fourth quarter, along with some electric buses. It already unveiled its first ever EV chassis and a software platform last October. Meanwhile, Apple has been seeking production partners for the iCar, along with Foxconn, South Korea's Hyundai Kia, Japan's Nissan and Germany's Volkswagen are being brought up as possible candidates. All right. Uh, anyway, guys, that's a um, that's a brief uh, snippet from them. The thing is, this is obviously in uh, in play. Foxconn is still uh, getting all their um, ducks in a row. So, uh, but that was a blurb. And they mentioned Apple. Will the Apple car be built at Lordstown? I don't know. I suspected I made another video. I had Faraday Future as the Apple car manufacturer. But as uh, Carl Brunsfield, the head of uh, Faraday Future, said, in the future, the cars will be interchangeable. The, uh, the, the, the computers and the self-driving computers and software will plug in to the chassis. So that could be a modular take that uh, Apple is thinking about using. Anyway, uh, that gives you an idea of where Foxconn was in... Uh, now, I'm just starting this in mid-video here. This is the Fisker Ocean. Now, this is the car that Magna's building. This is on another kind of an open platform. Uh, the Magna, I think it might have Volkswagen involved in the platform of this. This car is not going to be built at Lordstown. Just to give you an idea of the type of vehicles Fisker's building, they're doing the design, business uh, concept, and marketing of this, and this whole vehicle is built by Magna. So... Just to give you an idea here, now I'm gonna I'm gonna stop this, and we're gonna go. Okay, this is the uh, the promo for the Project Pair. That stands. That's an acronym for something, Personal Electric Alternative, something or other. This is the Fisker promo spot. It doesn't say a whole lot, but this is the vehicle that Foxconn and that collective is going to build at Lordstown is going to be the pair vehicle. And this is going to be like a $34,000 vehicle. Uh, and it's going to use the uh, everything we've been talking about for the last half hour. Anyway, that's Fisker. Just to give you an idea, pair, that's the vehicle they're going to build at Lordstown. So we'll see how how that hi this out. is mxux now we're going to go through the second portion of this uh video here i'm going to take these headphones off this is the that was all about foxconn and what they're doing this is the lmc end of the deal with the uh, with foxconn okay and the deal feel fully consummated would mean foxconn would pay lordstown 230 million for his plant and buy 50 million of the ev startups common stock uh, beyond certain customers, the agreement is non-binding. So the thing is, they're saying Q2 next year, this is going to be finalized. I said in a previous video that uh, they would not be talking about this if it wasn't going to happen because of the SEC and the DOJ thing with uh, Foxconn, with uh, Lordstown. But uh, you're looking uh, right here at, uh, I don't know, what is that, $300 million. I think... Um, if everything's taken into account, there's, uh, I, I don't want to say that, you know, Q's View did a great video on this. I think there's about 500 million coming into Lordstown at the end of all this. But certainly uh, the 230 and 50, let's just say with the cash they have on hand, this puts them at about 
500 million, the magic number for car makers, to launch uh, the Endurance. Now, the thing is, here, let's just do that. Yeah, you do this plus the cash they have on hand of 210 million. So 240, 300 million, I don't know. There's a lot of money involved here. At least 300 million. Uh, I'm not going over the finances of this deal. I'm trying to go through the mechanics. Again, Q's view, excellent video on this. You can take a look at that for the numbers. Uh, Foxconn would purchase the Lordstown facility, excluding Lordstown, excluding hub assembly line, battery module, and packaging line. Okay, so, uh, and certain intellectual property rights and other excluded assets for $230 million. So what they're getting is they're going to get the frame shop, I think, and the paint shop and the stamping shop and the assembly line and all that. Lordstown is basically keeping everything they put in except for the frame line. And it seems like they're going to maintain rights, the North American rights to the hub motors and other excluded assets, which may include the frame shop, I'm not sure. But the point is, Foxconn is buying everything that basically that that uh, Lordstown hasn't built up on their own. There. And of course, as with Fisker, they'll retain all the dies that they have made for the endurance, for the stamping dies, and the soft dies that they've made for the van. And um, so basically, um, they're going to get a long-term lease. I'm going to go over that later. But anyway, that's what Foxconn is buying, buying the rest of the plant and all the robots and all the fixtures and everything. Both entities would negotiate, negotiate a contract manufacturing agreement, which would be a condition of the closing of the purchase, whereby uh, Foxconn would match, uh, would uh, Foxconn would manufacture Lordstown Motors Endurance full-size pickup truck. So basically, uh, they're going to take over the, the manufacturing line, and uh, the endurance is going to be a model built on that line. That line, I was told, could build three models, different models simultaneously, maybe more with an EV. So they can manufacture mo multiple models on that line at one time. And, of course, Foxconn could do anything they want with it as well to improve that. Uh, Ford, Lordstown Motors would also agree to provide Foxconn with certain rights with respect to future vehicle programs. So, uh, the deal with the manufacturing deal is going to work that they're going to get a commission, a, a commission on each vehicle they build for Lordstown. This is how they've been doing it, uh, how, the deal they have with Fisker, or the deal Fis Fisker has. Most likely, it's going to be the same thing for the Endurance. So, you got the Endurance going off the line. Uh, there's going to be a discount to, Lord, to General Motors on the credits, EPA credits, and then there's going to be a fee going to um, uh, Foxconn for the manufacturer on each unit. And then you're going to have some dilution um, with the stock as well. But I think this still fits into my price prediction of 2025 of uh, 100, uh, over $100 a share. I think the top end was $120. Um, so, um, I think that this isn't going to change the stock value that much. I think once that this vehicle gets off the line, uh, that the Lordstown stock is going to go up because this actually is not a bad deal for Lordstown. Anyway, and certain rights with respect to future vehicle programs. One of the future vehicle programs I'm really excited about at Lordstown is their SUV. They can produce on a frame with solid rear axle the endurance version of the Mercedes G-Wagon. It would be so badass. Seven passenger SUV, full towing capabilities, four wheel drive, 600 horsepower, a Mercedes killer, okay? And that's actually the vehicle they were gonna do next. They did the fan setup because they thought they were gonna get the postal contract, which they didn't get, but anyway. That is the future vehicle I think uh, Foxconn is talking about. Um, concurrently with the closing under the definitive agreement, Lordstown issues would issue warrants to Foxconn warrants to buy the stock. Uh, uh, not expiled until the third anniversary of the closing for 1.7 million shares at $10 per share. So again, 
there is dilution. It's not that much. And this is a carrot to keep uh, Foxconn on the ball and so forth. Their warrants exercisable third anniversary. So, you know, uh, that's when they can, they can um, exercise those. Um, so there is a stock component. Not only are they buying 50 million, uh, they're building another, what is this, 20 million here. So they're going to have about 70 million in, which is what uh, General Motors has in uh, Lordstown stock. Uh, okay, the parties have agreed to explore licensing arrangements for additional truck pickup truck programs. They are going to they are going to take this. This is the ultimate pickup truck, the ultimate electric pickup truck. Foxconn knows this with that straight rear axle. Nobody can touch this truck. You watch. They're going to be building electric pickup trucks for everybody using the Lord Stein endurance design. And that's going to be licensed to Foxconn and it's going to be a money, money printing machine. Following the closing under definitive agreements, Lord Stein was went into a long-term lease, okay, for a portion of the existing facility. So uh, they are selling, they are, they're selling the building out from under them. They probably have what, like, it's probably like a 90 year lease or some outrageous thing like that. And um, also would offer employment to Lordstown Operational and Maxwell Manifest. So I think that uh, Foxconn is going to keep everybody in there that knows what they're doing right now. They've got this line up and running, and they're just going to add on to that and change it and update it as they see fit. Um, now, Lordstown also has employees in California that aren't mentioned here and employees in uh, Detroit that aren't mentioned here. So this is only manufacturing area. Uh, now this is a, this is a quote from the guy from uh, uh, Foxconn. I believe the innovative design of the endurance pickup truck with its unique hub motors delivers an advantageous experience and has manufacturing efficiencies. Absolutely. It will undoubtedly thrive under our partnership and business model. You know, nothing could be more true than that. Uh, and this guy from Foxconn sees it, he knows it, and it is the truth. They are going to be selling these pickup trucks, let me tell you. In addition, this facility would learn, uh, serve as a speed to market asset that would also support Foxconn partner and customer Fisker. So they're going to build the, the Fisker pair uh, also at Lordstown, which is, you know, the first uh, vehicle that's going to be designed using an app that's going to use this whole system that Foxconn has worked out, and it's going to be built at Lordstown. And this also could be quite a good car. We'll have to see. And this is from the uh, uh, chairman that we just saw of, the, uh, of Foxconn. So innovative design. Hub motors, manufacturing efficiencies. This guy knows exactly what he's talking about. This guy, Foxconn sees money. This guy knows how to make money. And he's right. The manufacturing efficiencies, they're going to be able to, I'll tell you. Anyway, uh, we are excited about joining the prospect of joining forces with a world-class smart manufacturer like Foxconn and believe the relationship provide operational technology and supply chain benefits to our company and overall uh, accelerate overall scaled vehicle production and increase employment in Lordstown. It will increase production. Uh, allow Lordstown to take advantage of Foxconn extensive manufacturing expertise and especially the supply chain, because they're over there in Taiwan with TSMC and they got the chips, right? They already got the chips for the iPhone. Uh, while freeing up Lordstown Motors to focus on bringing the endurance to market, developing service offerings for our fleet customers and designing and developing new models. So again, Lordstown is gonna turn into the Apple all right, guys, I just want to put a close on this. Gonna, uh, uh, that was a pretty long models. video. Fox I haven't Scott been on for a while. There's a lot to cover on this story. The no one's covering it. There's no coverage whatsoever. I hope you find this interesting. I said when There's I started, really now, this is the uh, interesting CEO stuff here. Uh, I am not a financial Lordstown. advisor. I said that this when I started our advice. success as a company. This is a business case to the success of this plan. But anyway, I hope you liked the video. 
Uh, we I had just to want to ask you guys to, wrap it up to like and subscribe. If we couldn't do it on our own. We had to do it with video, others. So there you go. Uh, I would like there you go. And I'm not. I'm a supporter. I Again, want to see it succeed. I gave that little speech about. I know you guys support guys. me. I don't think this is a bad. This deal cannot be monetized. This doesn't uh, attract enough traffic to be monetized. Let's hope so if it you want to keep through. getting this information, you got to help me. You got to subscribe. You got to like. You got to comment. And I do it's read all the comments. Uh, anyway, thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it. Programming. Sorry about the link, but had to be. It is what it is. All right, guys. Thanks very much. So we're talking about. Hope you like the video. The SUV project. I'll tell you, that's going to be a killer. A killer for Lordstown. Uh, under the tentative deal, Foxconn would provide a down payment of one hundred million at the signing, and then the balance of one hundred thirty would be due at closing. Okay, on April thirtieth. So they're going to get a hundred million up front plus the fifty million. So they're going to get one hundred fifty million up front. And what do they got? Two ten million in hand, so that's three ten, three sixty. So that's about four hundred million, which I think certainly will get them uh, to the certification with uh, the EPA and the National Highway Transportation Safety and the other certifications that they need, uh, and get them to start a production. Uh, I believe they're serious about it. Is what Navaji says and. You know what? This is a great deal for both parties here, I think. I think it's a, um, a big win for Lordstown. It's a big win for that locality. And this is a whole new way of producing vehicles uh, in the United States. This has been done in, uh, in China before, uh, again, with Mag Magna and uh, some other companies. But this is the first in Ohio in the United States. I hope I explained it. You know, basically, you get an app, you design the interior and exterior of the car, and you pick from drop-down menus what you want, and they build it for you. It's great. Anyway, uh, and these are quotes from uh, the CEO of Lordstown. And again, he's a New York finance guy. I don't think he would do a bad deal. Sounds like a good deal to me. And um, this is, I'm going to try to go to this link right now. This is a, uh, this is from the local news station there, WKBN Channel 27. Uh, and this is a video about um, the uh, purchase. Let's unmute this. More growth in the years to come inside what had once been General Motors' largest plant. Shopping for your next vehicle is easy at Fred Martin Ford. Click here and bring the dealership right to your desktop or smartphone. Request a quote, appraise your trade, even fill out a simple application to get pre-approved in minutes. Forward advertising. <laughs> CEO Dan Ninavaji spoke by phone in a short time ago with senior reporter Jerry Ricciuti. They talked about the recent announcement agreement in principle with Taiwanese electronics maker Foxconn. Now, he says the location of the Lordstown complex was a key to bringing that deal together. The location of the supply base in Ohio and surrounding communities and, of course, the people. You've got a trained professional workforce here uh, that's ready to go, a turnkey plant. It's phenomenal. It's a, it's a perfect combination of things for somebody who wants to build an EV manufacturing hub. Now, the deal between Lordstown Motors and Foxconn should be complete by the end of next April. Shopping uh, for your next vehicle. Okay. So, uh, there we go, guys. And uh, I hope you liked that presentation. Um, I think I've gone through the whole thing. I'm going to do a short section here on uh, the stock prices today and the stock symbols. Okay, thanks for watching. MXUX here. So let me, this is a service I use that does some technical analysis. Uh, and we're looking at ride stock here, 585. The entire market was down today. Uh, I just thought it would be interesting to take a look at, um, at this uh, analysis here. Uh, we've got uh, resistance, so let's go down. Resistance is at 658, according to this service, and support is at 477. 
So we closed at 585. So uh, that's where that is. Now this is very interesting. These are different uh, MACD, EMA, RSI, everything's bearish. Uh, MACD's neutral in the long run. The Fibonacci's intermediate are bullish. And the highs are very bullish long run. And the lows are very bullish intermediate. And stochastics are bullish. And we got a bearish signal here. So all in all, a pretty negative uh, analysis of ride here with a bad day in the market. I think a lot of people got stopped out of this stock uh, with stop losses, but uh, I think this deal is invigorating. And uh, let's just take a, a, a look. And at, you can uh, see the here, NASDAQ this is the daily chart. We opened ride. at 660, and we're down to 5 uh, 580, or whatever the case may be. Not a very pretty chart. Um, the um, oil market was down today. Let's just take a look and see if there's any headlines here. Uh, why Lordstown stock sank again on Monday? Well, let's see. Let's just take a look at that. Uh, stock market Dow in a ride put and call. All right, let's take a look at this just for giggles. And All right, see guys, I just want to put a close here. on this. There we uh, go. That was a pretty long video. I haven't Motley been on for a while. There's a lot to cover this on this be story. A negative no article. one's covering it. There's the no Motley coverage Fool whatsoever. I hope you find this interesting. There's a lot of really sank on my uh, interesting stuff here. Yet another uh, rival not a financial advisor. You know, this is not financial advice. This is a business field study, upgrade, uh, actually. A massive uh, but anyway, upgrade I hope you like the video. Some market about the uh, I just want to ask you guys space. to like uh, and subscribe and share so what? the video. Last week, with Lordstown uh, with uh, 9, Precision like Lordstown, I'm a supporter to I sell it for $230 million. In terms of the I know you guys support me. The right to this cannot be monitored. This, this doesn't attract enough traffic to be monitored. So if you want to keep getting this information, you've got to help me. You've got to subscribe. You've got to like and you gotta comment. happy with the development. And I do read all the comments. I'm happy with anyway, the development. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it. More Sorry about the link, but it had to be. It is what it is. All right, guys. Thanks very much. Uh, right. hope you liked the video. We'll see you on the next one. Okay, so, you know, this is old news. Again, uh, Motley Fool just wants to do as much negative press on Lordstown as, as possible. Um, these factors have sent Lordstown crashing doubles that are just looking over. Smart investors, instead of betting on stock, betting some analyst views, waiting further updates about endurance production and delivery timelines at a time when rivals continue to leap ahead. Now, here's the thing. First of all, Motley Fool has never written a, a positive article about uh, Lord Stein, and I'm just going to dissect this for one minute. The Rivian, heavy steering at high speed, four and a half foot bed, the seats are hard, the stereo is lackluster, the operating system of the vehicle is glitchy and slow. Um, it's not even a truck. Uh, they're not showing any highway tests driving it because, you know, it's not any good on the highway. The steering, it's too heavy. And uh, they aren't talking about the charge times either. Uh, but, you know, in any case, that's a lifestyle vehicle. It is not a work truck like the Endurance. It's not even the same class. So then we'll move on to the next competitor. Who is that? Cybertruck. Same thing. Not going to matter. Again, both Rivian and Cybertruck, it cracks me up. They both have trunk lids in the bed of the truck that open up that you can store things in or put spare tires in. You know, if you're working with a truck, you're dropping heavy stuff in the bed all the time. That is going to dent those lids, and they're never going to open. You're going to need a crowbar to open them. These, these are not work trucks. Neither one of these are work trucks. They'll never work as a work truck, okay? Forget it. They're not. They're not the endurance. They're not even close. Then we go to the Ford F-150. This is all I got to say about the Ford F-150. I've gone over this forever, you know the 14 hour charge time. If you want to if you want to get the high battery and the uh, home charging option, you're going to have to run 8 gauge wire thick as your finger to the outlet, three strands of it just to get the thing charged, okay? You're going to have to have a minimum of 200 amp service in your house to even charge the thing. Okay? And that's one thing. Well, and then we can talk about the weight. And then we can talk about the battery. Uh, the, the whole thing about the Ford is this. They're planning a whole new uh, endurance. I mean, uh, Lightning in 2025. That says everything. This is a stopgap vehicle. It's not going to perform. 
I mean, there are some people that will only buy Ford. They're going to buy it. Anybody that's looking at a real for a real pickup truck is going to buy the Endurance. And by the way, as one of my uh, viewers commented, he talked to some insiders at Ford. Uh, I thought there were all 70,000 and above models that were ordered, the 150,000 orders they say they have that they can talk about that Lordstown can't. He tells me it's 90,000, they're all $90,000 trucks. So they are not going to sell any of the fleet trucks. I don't even believe, uh, I don't even think they're going to make any of the fleet trucks in the next two, three years. Not until the new model comes out. That's my take. But uh, these guys, Motley Fool, let me tell you. These guys are phonies. They're fakes. They've never put out any positive news on right, as have not, neither has anyone else. Now, they can try to paint this as negative as they like. This is a great, I think, this is a great development. And I think that this is going to be the way cars are made. Okay? As I said, Tesla had to, had to forge the way and, and, and be the trailbreaker, and they had everybody against them. That's why they had to bring everything in-house. Now the industry's more mature. We have mature players in it. The technology's more mature. We can go to this manufacturing as a service model. And in any case, Lordstown has better technology, more efficient technology. And uh, it's interesting that the head of uh, Foxconn uh, recognizes that. But uh, anyway, uh, that's my two, two cents on that. Okay, just wrapping up with these two charts. Now this is a chart on Fisker. Um, and this is a one-year chart, and I believe they went public via SPAC. They, they had a high here of, what, about 27, and they've been going up and down, and they're trading at 14. And uh, this, uh, their pair vehicle is going to be produced at uh, Lordstown. Uh, just to give you an idea of the symbol and uh, what the chart looks like. Um, and again, down on the day, we had a pretty rough day in the market today. But uh, just to give you an idea of where the price is, and they enjoy a higher price than Lordstown. <laughs> okay. Anyway, this is uh, Foxconn's chart for the last year, uh, and they've gone from 540 to 777. It looks like, and they were up above nine for a while there. Now the thing about uh, uh, Foxconn or HMPHP, but whatever it is is um, their, their revenues, I mean, their, their revenues are high, uh, like $48 billion or something like that, but they only make $2 billion of profit off of that. So a lot of revenues, uh, looks like tight margins, but um, them, uh, you, know, they dom you know, they dominate the phone industry, right? They're going to dominate the car industry. So I just wanted to give you guys a look at these two charts and let you know uh, those are the two other companies involved uh, along with uh, with Ride and uh, we should uh, we should put Ride up here. Let's put Ride up. Uh, uh, let's just see here. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Let's get Ride up so you can see the same chart. There we go. There we go. Come on, Ride. All right. And let's go to charts. There we go. And here is the ride chart for comparison. And you can see this is the one year chart on ride. Uh, yowie. Okay. So, um, again, we were up around 31 at some point, I believe. And now we're down at 585. So there's ride, 585. There's Fisker, 14. And there's Foxconn at 7. Anyway, guys, uh, I'm going to wrap this up with a summary at the end. I hope you liked the video. Sorry it took a while to get this out. I've been trying to update some uh, production values here, <laughs> and, uh, and I had a dentist appointment. All right, let me try to put a summary together on this. Okay, guys, I'm going to close this out. I'm just going to go over a couple of details on the Lordstown site here, but I just want to mention one thing. I was watching the Telosev, uh, the Telosev guy, uh, the guy with the red beard and red hair. He was doing a live cast about the Rivian uh, and a, a, a stream, and I, I got on there, and, I, and he's talking. And he didn't mention Lordstown, and I, I typed in the comments, what about Lordstown? Lordstown Lordstown's doing the same thing. You know, no one knows anything about this truck except 
us in in the community here me you and and q's views that's it this guy was clueless and i like this guy i think he's very competent he had no idea what was going on at lordstown he goes well it's kind of a plain truck D knows nothing so you know anybody else that's talking about lordstown doesn't know what the hell they're talking about i'm just want to put that out there and i showed you the motley fool is uh, you know guys this is going to be a sleeper i think it's all going to uh, come to fruition here Hopefully this deal pulls through. We're going to see. Anyway, I think this is a great update for Lordstown. I do not see it as a negative. As Dan Navaji said, you know, if we're not using 60% of the plant, then 60% of the plant's a liability. This way, they got that liability off their shoulders. And, you know, it's a win-win for everybody concerned. They're going to get the production. And Foxconn is going to be a monster in EV production, whether anybody likes it or not. I don't think there's any way they can lose, really. Anyway, uh, performer of trucks, blah, blah, blah. They're talking about uh, the uh, Foxconn thing here, blah, blah, blah. Production of the endurance. This is what we want to talk about here. Move forward, plan to build a limited number of vehicles for testing. This is EPA. Uh, verification and regulatory approval to the balance of 2021 and the first part of uh, 2022. In light of Foxconn agreement, the company will evaluate the potential impact of the party's contract manufacturing relationship on commercial production. So in other words, they're basically on the same schedule. They were going to do a start of production limited number. I gave them one quarter uh, of leeway on the start of production. Uh, which would uh, put them at the beginning of next year. Um, and it looks like they're pretty much going to be on that schedule. Uh, they're talking about the manufacturing relationship with Foxconn, blah, 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 integration and timing. So, you know, we have to give them some uh, space to, to work this out. But uh, it will update its production plan during our Q Q3 2021 earnings call for in mid-November. So I think that's all we're going to go to. But the point is, they're pretty much on schedule. I don't see this as a delay. I think it looks to me, it appears to me that they're working straight through all of this, uh, going for the uh, certification. And, you know, the EPA and the Nat National Transportation Safety, blah, blah, blah. And I forget who else has to certify for production. They have to get those certifications before they can do production. So they're probably going to certify and get right up to production and then they're going to probably uh, hand off to uh, Foxconn. And I think this is going to be more Lordstown than Foxconn in the beginning. And Lordstown is going to be teaching Foxconn. <laughs> anyway, uh, financial outlook, capital expenditures, SD, you know, now the SDNA, you know, I got to tell you, this is this is the thing that's blowing up their budget. It's the legal costs. It's producing. The, it's defending against these stupid SEC actions and DOJ actions that are costing them so much money. Okay, so the the, the cash uh, September 30, 2021, down. F okay, so 210. It's down from 270. So it's down like 50 million. Okay, so. We got to do a deal, and I think this is the deal to do. Anyway, let's all look forward to the uh, mid November uh, earnings call, and they're going to give us an update. I think they're moving towards certification as we speak, and they're hammering out this deal. And I think Navaji is the right guy to be there. I am very happy. I don't see the price of the stock uh, reacting. Uh, no one understands this company. No one understands Foxconn, what Foxconn's doing. You know, you have to dig a little deeper to even understand anything that's going on here. And most people are too lazy to do that. And that includes all the analysts and everyone else and commentators on television they, uh, and YouTube. So uh, those of us in the know know what's going on. And I think uh, this is a very positive uh, for Lordstown. And... Um, Provided it goes through, and Navaji says he believes it will, uh, this deal is going to launch a whole new era in EV manufacturing. And I do believe these guys are going to challenge Tesla as well. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you liked the video. 
and uh, please like and subscribe. I hate to ask that, but you know these Lordstown videos. Nobody, it doesn't attract you. You can't monetize. Nobody attract. No, it attracts nobody except us. So if you want me to keep coming with this information, and I want to keep putting it out there, and I support Lordstown, please like and subscribe and share the videos. All right, thanks a lot. That's MXUX. Thanks for watching. All right, guys, I just want to put a close on this. Uh, that was a pretty long video. I haven't been on for a while. There's a lot to cover on this story. No one's covering it. There's no coverage whatsoever. I hope you find this interesting. There's a lot of really uh, interesting stuff here. Uh, I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is a business case study, actually. Uh, but anyway, I hope you liked the video. Uh, I just want to ask you guys to like and subscribe and share the video, will you? Uh, I'd like Lordstown. I'm a supporter. I want to see it succeed. I know you guys support me. This cannot be mon This doesn't attract enough traffic to be monetized. So if you want to keep getting this information, you got to help me. You got to subscribe. You got to like. You got to comment. And I do read all the comments. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it. Sorry about the link, but had to be. It is what it is. All right, guys. Thanks very much. Uh, hope you liked the video. We'll see you on the next one.